Hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison. In this video, I am going to sit here and our trusty uh, associate, uh, Lee Parsons, is pretty much just going to throw out random piano questions, uh, the top piano questions uh, from Google. He has not told me what these are ahead of time. I assume he's not going to ask me something that's absolutely insanely ridiculous, but I have no idea. And I'm going to do my best to answer them for you uh, because obviously somebody out there is asking them for Google to be telling us that these are the most popular questions. So we hope you enjoy this journey through a piano FAQ. Let's get started with this right away. Well, a lot of things, but uh, most acoustic pianos are going to be made primarily of a variety of woods and iron and steel uh, and actually a fair amount of felt. Of course, when people ask about hammers, everybody knows or most people know that a hammer is made of wooden felt. But when you talk about what a piano is made of, sometimes felt doesn't make the list, I find. But uh, that's pretty much it. You could uh, more or less uh, build a piano pretty much entirely of natural occurring materials if you had to, which makes sense because they've been doing it for a couple hundred years. So um, there are some modern examples uh, now where pianos are starting to shift more towards, uh, I, I guess, more uh, contemporary materials, uh, just like a lot of other industries. I mean, aircraft used to be built out of wood and Obviously, they're not anymore. Pianos are introducing some of those same kind of building materials like synthetics and carbon composites and various, you know, aluminum extruded products in there. But yeah, that's that's mostly it. Wood, uh, iron, steel, felt. When were pianos invented? Well, uh, they often say that the piano is about 300 years old. Um, when you get back that far, it sort of starts to be a little blurred what you call a piano. It's a bit of a semantic issue in terms of labels, but uh, in terms of a keyboard instrument uh, that would, you know, throw some kind of a mallet towards a string uh, instead of like kind of a harpsichordy thing, um, yeah, I think it's sort of somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 years. Is obviously they've changed a lot. Uh, over that time and really the modern piano started to more or less look the way it does now uh, around the late 1800s and there's been like in terms of the scale of change or the the pace of change through the 1800s uh, you know basically nothing's changed a whole lot since about 1930 um, uh, so yeah pianos pretty much looked now the way they did back in about 1930 uh, and before then there was all kinds of stuff they were experimenting with but back to the first question pianos are about 300 years old carefully uh, pianos pianos can be very expensive and or sorry well yeah they are very expensive uh, but they're they're pretty heavy uh, I think you know grand pianos start to uh, get well up into like 1500 pounds. Um, I know that for a, a small baby grand piano, it can be six, 700 pounds, five, six, 700 pounds. Some of those old uprights were close to a thousand pounds. So it definitely is a fairly heavy beast and you'd, you should probably use piano movers if you can. Um, if you've never seen a grand piano get moved, it is actually pretty cool because, uh, you know, an experienced mover can break that piano down in about five minutes and all of a sudden the legs are off and the pedals are off and it's up on its side and you can fit that through a normal size door. Not a, not a lot of people realize that that's how you move a grand piano, completely on its side with all the legs and pedals off. Well... Pianos are made 
First of all, you've got uprights and grand pianos. Grand pianos are made quite a bit differently than upright pianos. And it's one of the reasons why there's such a big difference in cost between a grand piano and an upright piano. So the grand pianos have those big sort of, you know, hoops that kind of have that shape. And often those are, uh, you know, thick laminations of hardwood or, or uh, kind of ply wood of some kind. Uh, and that's fed into this big hydraulic press and loaded up with glue and pressed uh, and dried and cured. And obviously different companies will have different techniques and thicknesses for that rim. Um, but that's kind of the starting process for a lot of these things is, is getting this big round rim um, that's usually done in one or two stages. Uh, and then you've got this big iron plate and its job is pretty much to hold the tension of the strings. Uh, and then you've got everything else, which is kind of a combination of both resonating materials and aesthetically nice materials that build the kind of the outside of the piano. But those are the, the major building blocks. You've, you've basically got the rim structure, you've got the plate, uh, you know, the plate and the supporting structure for the plate, uh, and then you've got the rest of the, of the cabinet. Probably the most intricate part of the piano, though, that isn't any one of those, uh, is the action. So that's what, that's what happens when you're pressing those keys. And just on the action alone, there's about 6,000 parts that go into a piano action, even, even basic ones. Uh, and what always fascinates me about piano building is you think of it as kind of an older instrument. It's been around for a long time, and you don't usually think of... Uh, something that old requiring so much accuracy uh, to be good. You know, we, we know in the aircraft industry, getting it to like one ten thousandth of an inch is, is like the tolerance level you need for uh, aeronautics and spacecraft and things like that. And in the auto industry, you, you're, you, you know, getting it to like one one thousandth of an inch in terms of the, the machining tolerances is what you need to be. Well, a really great piano needs about three one thousandths or four one thousandths of an inch accuracy. And when you think that that was actually a requirement or that was the standard that they were going for like a hundred years ago or 120 years ago, that just seems mind boggling to me. I mean, maybe people who know the history of, you know, Western engineering aren't surprised by that because maybe that's just the way it's been with machines for a long time. But I find that kind of fascinating. Uh, that that's the level of intricacy that's needed to really get a piano singing uh, the right way. Anyway, hopefully I answered that question, how piano's built. Well, that's, uh, pianos have a huge range in cost. I think the only other thing that I'm aware of that has a wide uh, range, in, at least in terms of like a common consumer good, because, yeah, I mean, there's mega yachts uh, that's also a boat. And, you, you know, you have a rowboat with a few hundred bucks up to, like, you know, a billion dollars. But I wouldn't call that a common consumer good. So in terms of a regular consumer good, automobiles, um, you know, appliances, computers, things like that, pianos probably have the widest range that I'm aware of. Because you can walk into one store, the same store, and be looking at a piano for $3,000, $4,000. And in that same store, you might very well find a piano that's $250,000. It's, it's just a huge range. But I will say that uh, for an upright piano, the most common price range these days is, it likely falls kind of in about a five to a $7,000 range. That's kind of average. And for grands, it's kind of in about the ten dollars to $15,000 range. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of customers who choose to go above that budget for a variety of reasons. There's going to be customers who prefer to be below that budget, but those are averages. The sun is right.